Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity topics. And in today's video, we're going to be continuing our cybersecurity career series and we'll be discussing the role of the cyber intelligence analyst. So this is really one of those roles in cybersecurity that kind of make you feel like you're working for the CSA or the FBI because a lot of what you're doing has to do with gathering information, gathering intel, which oftentimes may be confidential or highly confidential and basically gathering all that information into a cohesive document or plan to provide to your company or if you're a third party vendor to whatever companies in whatever sectors that you're serving and basically creating some kind of product that is delivered on a weekly, monthly or quarterly basis. So you can really think of it as you being an information broker for all things cybersecurity, cyber threats, cyber intelligence, nation states, usually anything that has to do with offensive security or vulnerabilities that could be exploited, specifically zero days that may be very pertinent to the sector that you're working in. So essentially cyber intelligence analysts their roles are exactly what they sound like. You gather intelligence from various different sources. They could be sources that are just online, aka different cybersecurity blogs, different hacker news sites that go into the attacks that are going on, what nation states are doing, any newly compromised companies that may have attacks that may be relevant to what information your company is trying to gather. And then there may also be some open source tools that you guys are using to gather some data, as well as private tools, specifically tools that your company pays to have a license to use. And the fees can really vary depending on depending on which tool that you're gathering information from but there's a lot of tools out there that have their own cybersecurity intelligence teams that gather articles and write these articles for you to then consume as a cyber intelligence analyst and then you gather whatever is relevant to your company and then use that information for whatever business purposes that you need so honestly in the realm of information selling which essentially this is what it is uh, you're gathering information from other sources that you may also have to pay to get information from especially for articles that may be behind some kind of pay wall and these may not be open to the public at all they're likely websites that work specifically with just companies that have cybersecurity teams that are looking to use this information and you likely need to have some kind of license to view some of these tools that are private or or need to be paid for so as someone who is working in cybersecurity intelligence your main job is to gather as much information as possible to arm your company and whoever you're protecting to be able to make better decisions to guard against actual attackers or actual nation states that are trying to get to your information or your IT systems or whatever applications that you're trying to protect. So it really helps if you have some kind of technical background because with a technical background, if you're reading something about a zero day attack, they likely have the foundations to understand how a specific zero day attack works, especially if it goes into more technical details, which oftentimes it does, and you most likely will not be coding in this role, but if you do have some experience with development and understanding how to read code, specifically when it comes to seeing examples about certain zero day exploits that you will probably need to know inside out because you'll be creating the documents and reporting the articles for your company to consume. So you're really like the SME or the subject matter expert for the top topics that you research. And depending on what company that you're working for, you may always be specifically focusing on one certain type of exploit or one certain type of attacker, whether it be a nation state or a specific region. It really depends on how big your cybersecurity team is, honestly. But there may be someone who may come from a software development background who may look into more of the zero day exploits and things that are a bit more technical. But honestly, people from all types of backgrounds come to work in cyber intelligence specifically because they enjoy the information gap gathering aspect of the job, which honestly is a good chunk of your time. You're probably splitting your time between gathering information and then the other half is putting it all together in a cohesive format. So AKA reading and writing. <laughs> now I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. It really depends on, again, what kind of person you are. If you enjoy reading about different attacks and then writing about them in a more relevant way, then that is obviously a really good skill to have coming into this role. But if you're someone who hates writing reports, maybe you haven't read the news in a while, then that may be a hint that this role may not be the best for you going into it just at the surface level. So there's a lot of tools out there that you can gather cybersecurity or cyber threat intelligence information. And I think I mentioned it before that some of them are basically completely free, aka cybersecurity blogs and, and hacker news websites, and then ones with freemium plans. And then there's ones that are completely behind a paywall that may be specifically made for companies. A few examples of these include Anomaly, Threat Connect, Shodan, and Maltigo, Passive Total, SolarWinds. There's a lot of tools out there that 
the cyber intelligence analysts look at on a daily basis. So you likely will be starting today since news in cybersecurity comes and goes so quickly. Information from an article yesterday may be completely irrelevant, especially for zero day exploits where new information is getting found every hour of every day. You really want to stay on top of the latest articles and the latest patches for whatever exploits that may be out there that affect your company. So reading Hacker News articles essentially first thing in the morning is really important as well as throughout the day. So essentially this role is like getting paid to read Hacker News and writing book reports about them. That's like a really basic elementary way to talk about it, but that's essentially how it is. And and if you're someone who enjoys transcribing information like that, then it's actually a lot of fun, especially if you already are reading Hacker News anyway, then you might as well be doing a job that does something similar. And some of the tools I mentioned earlier might be specific to a more niche area of cybersecurity. For example, if you're using Shodan, which I believe is free to use, there may be some part you have to pay for, but I'll confirm. And honestly, the scary part is that anyone can use it. But essentially, Shodan focuses on Internet of Things devices. So anything from smart TVs, smartphones, smart anything, anything is smart nowadays. Even baby monitors and toys and kids toys nowadays. There's so many things that, that can connect to Wi-Fi and be able to be part of the internet. And Shodan essentially scans for all of those devices. So you can really use that information to your advantage if you're a cyber threat intelligence analyst that focuses specifically on internet of things devices which will probably be more likely if you're someone who works for a company that focuses on hardware. So almost all these tools I listed are essentially intelligence feeds. There's no specific skill that you need to really use them besides just being able to read and understand what they're talking about or what they're writing about in those articles, which I think again is another reason why cyber intelligence analysts roles are very sought after. Because first of all, they're one of the cooler cybersecurity roles out there that don't necessarily need a technical background and they don't necessarily need you to have years and years of experience either. Now, of course, it would help to have years of experience just so you can understand what to look for in certain articles, what things stick out, what red flags are there for you to then highlight in whatever reports that you're writing. So that's the part that may become more relevant or better with experience. But if you're someone who's been reading Hacker News for years of your life, you know, like I would consider that experience, if anything. Even something like having your own cybersecurity blog, which anyone can create on WordPress or a free blog site like Square or Squarespace. There's a lot of tools out there that help you create your own blogs or even just create your own RSS feeds, like using a tool like Feedly. And that honestly could be a project that you could put on your resume for cyber threat intelligence. And honestly, as an employer, that's all I'm really looking for. Someone who is interested in actually reading the news, understanding different hacks, understanding what nation states are doing out there and how it impacts me as a company. And if you're able to write up your own blog post about cybersecurity attacks, then you're already doing like 80% of the job of a cyber intelligence analyst. So like I said, it's, it's pretty easy to add your own personal experience for cyber intelligence analysts. And I also added this role as I believe the number one role in my top seven cybersecurity entry level jobs. And I can link that video below if you guys are interested in checking that out. So in terms of soft skills, verbal and written communication is obviously probably the most important part of being in cybersecurity intelligence because what you're doing is being an information broker. So you wanna be able to communicate as cohesively and simply as possible for any person to understand, whether it's a technical team, a CISO, some kind of executive that sits on your board. You wanna be able to convey whatever you're trying to say to all types of people, no matter how technical they are and how many years of experience that they have. And that's really the art of creating cohesive articles in cyber threat intelligence. All right, so next let's go into different education, experience levels, and certification. So I already really touched on the experience part of things because, because like I mentioned earlier, I do believe that an entry-level person could get a role in cybersecurity intelligence or cyber threat intelligence as long as you're someone who is interested in doing a lot of the deep digging when it comes to cyber news and different hacks that happen around the world. And it's a cherry on top if you're able to write about it in your own words in a concise and simplified format that anyone can read. And we have proof of this on our blog, which is pretty easy to set up these days and you can do it for free. You don't necessarily need your own domain. You can do it on a Squarespace site or a WordPress blog and that's all free. And you can add that to your resume. And if you're applying to cyber intelligence jobs, then as an employer, that is exactly what I'm looking for. 
All right, so next let's go into education. I believe that for a majority of cybersecurity roles out there, unless you're going to be some kind of malware specialist where you need certain foundational knowledge, which honestly you may still be able to get at a bootcamp that's focused on malware prevention or malware analysis. But when it comes to roles like cyber threat intelligence, I don't believe you necessarily require a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree, even just graduating from a bootcamp program. I think you'll be just fine applying to cyber threat intelligence roles. And honestly, you may even be better off depending on what kinds of tools that you're using and if you can speak to examples of you being able to use certain intelligence feed tools or certain open source tools or different projects that you've done based on intelligence gathering then honestly an employer isn't going to hold against you that you don't have a bachelor's degree now of course it depends on the company there may be some companies that state a bachelor's degree is required but if you have the personal projects and the experience to back it up I wouldn't necessarily worry about the actual education requirements, which a lot of companies are also straying away from anyway. So I believe in the next five, 10 years, companies are really gonna less and less look for bachelor's degrees because they honestly could be considered more obsolete, especially when there are boot camps that are actually training people to do the hands-on jobs and not sitting through four years of a college experience that only really gets into your real courses that have to do with your major in your, in your junior and senior years. All right, so next let's go into certifications. So the CTIA, or the Certified Threat Intelligence Analyst Certification by the EC Council is probably one of the most well-known ones for threat intelligence. So this one is definitely very holistic in the way that it includes hands-on training as well as an exam. And you do need to have three years minimum of experience working in some kind of information security capacity to take this exam. So definitely note that it's not a zero years of experience exam, like more beginner certifications like Security Plus or Network Plus. The next one is the GIAC Cyber Threat Intelligence Certification. This is another popular one honestly ec council giac comptia those are kind of like the three those are kind of like the three holy trinities of certifications in cybersecurity that really range from the entry level to mid-level career certifications so certifications that are given by those three organizations are likely going to be the most popular ones that are going to be asked for in actual job postings and i'll also list a few other certifications right here that may also be relevant to cyber threat intelligence analysts but i do think that for certifications you really do want the most popular ones because those are the ones that some employers may say are required in certain roles and if you're in a role that's more niche like cyber intelligence then it may be more helpful to get a already popular certification instead of me listing like five different intelligence certifications and it turns out you really only need to focus on probably the first two which is also in this case true all right so we've come to the final topic of this video which is of course salary as one of the more popular cybersecurity roles out there that aren't as technical as you know cybersecurity engineers or or pen testing or malware prevention, cyber intelligence analysts make on average in the US about $82,000 per year. The low in this range is about $54,000 per year and the high in this range is about $127,000 per year. So it's a very, very well paid job, especially for someone who is not technical or you really don't have to be technical and able like intelligence. Also keep in mind that your salary will likely range, can likely be changed based on the cost of living, what city and state you're working in, the sector, the company, the size of the company, your years of experience and certifications that you have. So it really depends on various different factors, but I do think that it's one of the most highly paid cybersecurity roles out there that don't require you to have a technical background. It's definitely a plus, but your day-to-day -day will likely not require you to use technical tools or coding or anything like that. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know any other roles in cybersecurity that you would like me to touch on. I hope these videos are helpful. I've especially enjoyed working on the career series just because it helps me also research a bunch of different roles in cybersecurity that I may also be interested in in the future. So, so yeah, it's definitely a really good learning experience to see what opportunities are out there, especially if you're someone who is boxing yourself in into one narrowly defined role or path and you kind of want to branch out a little bit. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.